Today on the Nozzleheads Notes podcast, we're going to discuss corn herbicide cutoffs, as well as what to do in these hot temperatures with our spray applications. Stay tuned. So Brady, uh, here we are. Uh, it's been a little bit. We've both been on the road. It's been uh, a lot of stuff's happened in the last couple of weeks, right? Um, you know, just a lot of traveling going on. I know you've got a different background that you're sitting in front of, but uh, uh, let's just, what, what's things going on up in Nebraska? How's things looking? I know, like I said, it's been a couple of weeks since we've got together. Yeah, like you said, different backgrounds. So I just completed a move. So I moved a little bit west to Nebraska, but I'm kind of right in the center of territory right now. So it's, it's good, good deal. Um, you know, going on in Nebraska right now, we've had uh, all kinds of wild weather. Last week, we had some hail, we had some storms, we had tornadoes, and it seems like it's kind of all over the board. We didn't have, we got good spots where it's good, and then there's spots where it's really bad. It doesn't seem like we've got a lot of in between, so with that, but we got quite a few uh, pivots flipped over and different things like that, which will make some challenges going into the season here, so our thoughts are definitely with those guys dealing with all the storm damage. Um but, uh, you know, we do have corns continuing to march on in growth. Beans are coming. They're a little bit slower. Um, I think beans are just a little bit off this year. I'm not quite seeing as much growth out of them as what we do with corn. Corn is anywhere from I can probably find V3 corn and I could probably find corn that's getting closer uh, to V8, depending on where I'm at, what time the field got planted, everything else like that. So we've got a wide range. I think with same thing's going to happen with beans. We're going to have a wide range that are canopying, a wide range that are still open as we go along. So um, this weather, this week, the weather's lining up to be hot and humid, or not, excuse me, not humid, but just hot and dry. We were just talking about hot and humid, but it's going to be hot and dry here. Um, maybe you've got something coming up a little bit different in your area. No, I think we're we're maybe a little different because we're quite a ways ahead of you. Our, our corn's quite a ways along. A lot of it's already past V8, so we've, we've shut down a lot of applications, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, and we've got beans that are up, uh, you know, several trifoliates on them to a significant portion of them that haven't been planted. Um, wheat crops starting to get close to coming out, of, and we'll have some, obviously, some double crops behind that. So, you know, crop progress is a little bit all over the board for, for soybeans, but for corn, most all of my corn is, is really taken off quickly. And even the stuff that got planted a little later is starting to get several collars on it. So uh, that leads us to kind of my first question here that, you know, I've been getting a lot of is, you know, what are your herbicide cutoffs? What's my watch outs? So, you know, as I think of Armazon Pro and Status, which are two of our common post treatments, you know, that V8 timing is one I really watch for. Yeah, I think, you know, we've talked about uh, uh, corn post and treatments, those type of things like that. And when, how long we can go to, you know, status is going to be the one that's got a long range window we go all the way from the v2 four inch tall all the way up to v8 so we've got the um you know that's a long time comparatively to a lot of our other post herbicides liberty on the other hand goes through v6 so you know that's kind of getting you know we may have some guys that are already off for that some guys that are going to be soon they're going to be off of that type of thing like that the one watch out I do say for both of these with our corn post, and I don't know what you're seeing, Jared, but we are seeing closer nodes. And so the corn may not look like it's V8, but you get out there and you start growth staging it and you find out that you've got enough collars that it is V8 indeed type of thing like that or V6 or whatever. So I think that's that's definitely a watch out that we have with that. A lot of herbicides are going to have that V6 timing for cutoff. And so we just need to be aware of what we're talking about. Yeah, I think that's pretty common, Brady. Your comment on the stack nodes or the shorter nodes this year, that cool snap, we, we had a lot of this corn early season uh, go through and experience has, has made basically those first through the fifth collars um, a little shorter than, than normal. Well, we haven't had that vertical extension, which isn't all bad, right? But it, it can be a little tricky. And I think it brings up uh, maybe a moment here that we should talk about. When we talk about counting collars, we're talking about watching that leaf come all the way down to the stem and it makes a white collar where it touches that stem. That's actually what we're counting when we talk about V6 or V8. We're looking for six of those collars or eight of those collars. And the sad part or the hard part with corn is as it gets bigger, we lose some of those lower leaves. So it can be a little tricky. And I always encourage guys, especially if you're counting eight collars, uh, to, to split the stock and double check if you actually know what those are. And if you aren't familiar with that, go look up how to do that online. There's some good videos. I think even we've discussed some of that on some of our other nozzle head videos as well and trying to grow stage that corn properly because as it gets tall, 
um, we can often lose a leaf and be further along even yet than, than what we anticipate. Right. I, I think that's something you got to watch. And, and when we tar- start talking about growth staging, sometimes guys go off of height and, you know, that's an easy thing. There's some labels that still use height in different spots. Um, the one thing I always hear, and I don't know where this ever came from, but is do you measure the leaf in the droop or do you measure it fully extended? And so I, I still get that from time to time, but you never, I've never run into a situation where you ex- pull a leaf up and you measure it and that's your thing. But I, I do hear that re- question from time to time that come up. And so I don't know where it got started, but really you're always at the, the fully emerged leaf. And then what's kind of that center crown or the top of that arch is what I measure corn height from on this list yeah th- there is quite a bit of subjectivity around the height part right that's why most labels have gone to collars just to give us a little bit more of a firm number and, and i guess i'll just give a little justification for those that don't know we talk about why we stop at the v6 or v8 timings in corn some of that's how they metabolize but more importantly it's growth stage in the corn and what it's doing um you know after that v8 timing we start to get into a rapid growth uh, phase of that corn where we're getting vertical so the metabolism of the herbicides you know, can, can slow down a little bit, or we're trying to pack a lot of that in there and, and things like growth regulators can cause brittleness in those rapid growth phases. So we want to make sure we stop that. The other thing is some of our more systemic products um, get in there and actually can influence ear development. And so we know from V8 onward, that's really when that ear length and development really becomes rapid and, and important toward that yield aspect and that, and that formula. So um, that's one of the or many reasons why we shut off there at V8. So just for those that didn't know, there, there is a reason we just didn't, you know, throw a dart on a wall. Right. And, you know, you, you think about that is you're, you start spraying that taller corn, what has to happen to your boom, right? It goes up to get enough coverage to do that. As your boom goes up, now all of a sudden we're starting to deposit a lot more material because this crop has gotten taller. We're putting more material in the whirl of that corn and it's got to find a way to deal with that. And that's probably... You know, next to the roots, that's probably the most sensitive part right there because the growing point's starting to push through the ground and all those type of things. So, that, like you said, it's not just a dart on a wall like, hey, let's just stop here. Or it's even, you know, a lot of times we talk about testing residues and stuff like that. There are actually safety reasons for corn of why we want to be observant of those growth stages that we deal with. And I'll talk about the dirty word here of drops. You know, we've talked about drop nozzles and trying to, you know, cheat around that. And there are some labels that allow that. But don't let that be your save all. It does sometimes get us past the whirl and, you know, doesn't, but doesn't necessarily change our growth stage, right? What's happening in that plant still drives that. And anything we do get on those lower leaves, even with drops, the plant has to take care of and metabolize. So if we're in a situation where we need drops, I always kind of encourage guys to think about what we could have done to prevent getting to that because the grower, retailer, applicator doesn't really, there's, there's no good scenario where that comes out uh, in an easy way to do it or, or really with the results we wanted. So, um, having said all that, if you're using drops, you know, they are a tool, but not something we, we like to get forced into. Well, and I would also add to that because you had a good point there about the crop stage is still the crop stage. Same thing goes for hail, right? If you've had your crop hailed out, it's still a crop that says whatever growth stage it was, just because it might have got knocked off. You know, if you had V4 corn and it got knocked off, it's still V4 corn. So you have to treat that accordingly. Um, it's going to look weird for, you know, when it becomes a V8 corn and it just puts four more leaves on. But at the same time, you have to treat that as it was a V8 corn plant and not, it doesn't start over. Or you don't start counting again type of thing like that uh, with it, with hail damage. So you've got to be, and same thing, obviously, for soybeans too. You've got to be aware of your stages and you don't get to reset after a hail, unfortunately. You've still got to observe those cutoff limits. And that's right. I, and I, I think the moral of the story to kind of wrap up this little topic here is, just know where you're at. I mean, corn may not look, uh, you know, as far along as it is because of the height that we've seen this year with some of those nodes being maybe a little shorter with that cool snap. And, you know, don't violate the labels. There, there are consequences to doing that. So whatever product you choose to spray, like I said, Status, Armazon Pro are two, two key ones in my area that come to mind. They've got that V8 cut off. Liberty would have V6, as you mentioned. Know where you're at and don't violate those because there are consequences to doing such. So the, the hot topic we have next that we want to go over, no pun intended, is the heat wave that looks like it's coming this week. So how do we deal with that when it comes to spraying and what does that impact what we're trying to do? Because we're right in the middle. You, you might be a little bit further along in post, but we're hot and heavy and this is going to be a big week. Yeah, Brady, I, I think it's been a top of mind question because everybody knows that and probably has experienced it. Weeds get a little tougher to kill in hot weather at times. 
um, especially water hemp. It likes putting that waxy layer on to protect itself from losing water, you know, out of its leaves as much. And it's just basically thickening up so it can live. That also makes it a little tougher to kill this stuff with chemistry. So, you know, there's no magic bullet. And also at the same time, hot weather doesn't always equal bad performance. So, you know, we can't kind of throw everything in one bucket. But in super hot conditions, we just need to make sure we're trying to do everything right. So uh, keep it simple. Uh, the best steps that I think you can take are, one, make sure you're running the right rates, right? This is not a time to cheat rates. If we know we got to get out there and hammer something that's a little tougher to kill, we want to make sure we get a full dose on it. The second thing I always encourage guys to do is to make sure we're running good carrier volumes. You know, in situations where we would normally run 10 or 12, and we've gotten away with that in the past, now is the time to really double down and go to 15 or 20, depending on what's in your tank. That extra water gives us extra coverage down into the canopy and on these weeds uh, and gives us more time to get that herbicide in the plant. That's a really important piece. And then lastly is use those right adjuvants uh, with Liberty. You know, AMS is a huge piece of that. With others, it may be an oil or an anionic. And what some of those are doing is reducing that evaporation as those droplets fall through this hot air. And we actually get more droplets down into the canopy to get that herbicide into those plants for control. So in a simple way, that's my one, two, three steps that you can take when it comes to this time of year. Well, contrary to popular belief to, for our listeners, you and I do not uh, schedule this out and talk about exact, everything we're going to cover. We kind of have briefly kill over this, but you hit exactly the three points I would have done uh, to cover that topic right there. And I was thinking carrier volume big time because somehow it's, maybe it's kind of an old thing, but guys like to, you know, get kind of further west. They like to go lower volumes and different things because water may be a little more scarce, blah, blah, blah. But boy, in these conditions, I want my carrier volume, like you said, 15 minimum uh, type of thing. And then use the right uh, adjuvants. If you have adjuvant flexibility, go to the next level as you get further along and things get to, you know, kind of uh, hotter and that cuticle thickens up. So you've got more material to, to uh, or more yeah. product to get in there. And on that adjuvant piece, Brady, I'll ask you this. So we get this a lot. Well, do I need to start pulling some of this? Am I going to speckle my crop up? Because you now now we're talking something like maybe a Liberty and a Clethodim and uh, an Outlook, and, and we're throwing a whole bunch of stuff in the tank. And well, does that oil need to be in there or not? And, you know, to me, the first thing is, is let's evaluate field to field, right? Oil's not necessarily needed in everything, but if I'm running Clethodim for volunteer corn control, yeah, I probably need that Clethodim to, to be helped with the oil. So am I going to risk maybe speckling of some beans with that extra oil load? Possibly. But at the end of the day, I, with these chemistries we use today and the traits we have, anytime we've speckled something, I, almost always never equals to a yield issue, right? I mean, it's it's truly cosmetic in nature. And, and my number one priority when I'm out here is killing the weeds. So we need to dial those adjuvants in properly. Exactly. Again, you and I are thinking on the same track because I was just going to say, sometimes you, I, and I tell guys this, you got to decide what you want to do. What's important here? Do you want to kill weeds? Or do you want to make sure that you're babying the crop for everything? The crop's pretty durable, quite honestly, in the thing, a big scheme of things. A little speckling, a little burn on a leaf stage here. Now, as we get later, yes, that's more. When we get into, obviously, reproductive stages, those things, those add up. However, early in the vegetative growth stages, and especially when we talk about well, how small some of our beans are, I'm not worried about speckling beans at this point in time. If I've got weeds coming, especially when I'm dealing with really tough weeds, I got Palmer coming, you know, something like that. You better be focused on killing that weed because that Palmer doesn't care what your crop looks like. It's going to blow right past it. And so you want to get on it and, and be serious about it. And like I said, kind of decide what you're doing. And that is now as we get to the reproductive stages, and I know we're not all that far here, you know, from beans starting to flower and different things like that, that all changes. But right now where we're at, I'm at the stage of let's let's go kill weeds. And that's a great point, Brady, too. And I, the other point I always make is that in these hot conditions, don't forget our crops are trying to protect themselves from that, too. So they're building the waxy layer. So this this uh, kind of window that we've typically had a little more speckling than others, it, to me, it's this beginning of this heat stretch. It's not after we've had a couple of days of hot. Our, our crops tend to harden off a little bit, too, and protect themselves. And, and so really, we're in a kind of a tight window of actually seeing some of the speckling. And, and again, I, I like bringing it up just because you have a trait doesn't necessarily absolve it, right? It's all about plant metabolism and how those adjuvants and droplets get on that leaf and, and basically how much with that heat is, is getting in there so fast that we cause that speckling. But it's all cosmetic in nature and our products do it and there's other products that do it in the wrong conditions. 
because of what we're trying to throw out to kill the weeds. And again, it's a very rare incident when it does happen, but I, I wouldn't, I think all the questions I've been getting this week are people that are so nervous that we're going to speckle beans up that we're missing the big picture of let's go out and kill some weeds. And that that's goal number one. And back to your point, you couldn't have said it any better at the stage we're at in soybeans right now. Uh, my goal should still be to focus on killing weeds. And if I speckle a few beans up, probably not the end of the world. Yeah. It's almost always cosmetic. I mean, you can stress and, and worry about it or whatever, but I've just seen crop after crop come out of it type of thing like that. And, and with little to no impact in the big picture of things. And, and the last comment I'll make to kind of maybe wrap this topic up too, that I've gotten a couple of questions. Should I wait to spray? You know, or only spray in the mornings. Well, I'll just say this, the weeds are growing, the crops are growing. We're in time windows. We talked about in corn, but we'll have the same thing in beans, right? We only got so long to spray and the weeds are only getting bigger. As long as the wind is, is right and the ground can carry us, I think we should be covering some of these grounds, even in this hot weather. I, the, the hot weather shouldn't scare us away from spraying because it's hot. I, I get more worried about not getting those weeds when they're small. Or if the wind blows us out, that's a whole other story, right? We don't want to be blowing stuff in, into the wrong fields. But if it's a good day to spray, I wouldn't let the temperature bother me because we can make those three adjustments that we talked about earlier with rates, gallonage, and adjuvants and, and really dial in something that's very effective. And especially when I think about Liberty, it likes human hot anyway. So I think we're going to have a good week overall. This week. Yeah, and, and I think that's something contrasting the two different territories that we have. You know, the one thing that comes with my very dry weather we got coming is usually that southwest wind and it's teed up. So they're talking 20 mile an hour wind, you know, for quite a few days. So we will be challenged wind wise, but I'm with you. If the wind ain't blowing, we probably better be spraying because now's the time. You know, you can't come back in two weeks and say, hey, we're going to do this because the, you know, you don't, one, know what the weather's going to be, and two, it may be too late because you may not be able to get to those beans or that uh, corn or whatever it is type of thing. So I think all in all, if you can spray and you have the opportunity, I would not let the heat drive me away. I'd be more worried about other things, whether it be wind or rain or whatever type of thing affecting what I'm doing. I agree. So uh, with that, Brady, we should probably wrap it up. We've we've run some pretty long on time here today, but I think we had some good topics and talking points and hadn't seen each other in a while. So um, let's let's get back soon and uh, hopefully we see everybody uh, on the other end of this soon. Make sure to uh, like and subscribe us here, whether you follow us on YouTube or SoundCloud. Thanks, everyone.